You are exalted above the names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo. I'm a Christian content creator, and I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens Daily Devotional compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian book is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year of sharing from the devotional, and that's why we call it season five. And all those videos from 2020, they are all loaded on my YouTube channel. My handle on YouTube is Temi Agedo, which is right on the screen. I will encourage you to visit my channel. Not only to view those old Open Heavens videos, which are a great study guide, but most importantly, to view the Open Heavens for the current day. And I know that will bless you exceedingly. And while you're on my YouTube channel, very, very important. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And God bless you as you do now, Pastor. The boy led me to Christ in October 1997, a few years back when I was in the University of Lagos, Nigeria, in West Africa. And that gives you a few scriptures from the Bible and a memory verse. And that helps you to understand the body, the text. Praise God. So let's go straight into the daily devotional today. It's Monday, June the 17th. Monday, June the 17th. And the title of today's daily devotional is Spend Time With Them, Part 1. Now, every parent, uh, for the next three days, we're going to be talking about spend time with them, talking about parents spending time with their children. So spend time, spend time with them. And it's going to be a three-day series, part one to three. So we're going to start today. Praise God. Spend time with them. Praise God. Okay. So um, I will encourage you as a parent, you know, auntie, you know, whether you have children or not, every child is your child. Okay. So auntie causing you know spend time with them praise god many years ago well not many years ago um i had there was a couple in my church they had a little girl and they used to i wasn't driving then you know i was very young so i had they would drop me at a certain place and then i'll take a bus from there home after church and they had a little girl so i can't remember what we're talking about we're just talking about moped show that we used to watch you know as cartoons cartoons from those days and i began to sing this is the moped show yeah it's time to play the music it's time to dress up right you know the you know so, so, what's not the, so I, was, I just sang it you know i just sang it um in the car and about a few days later the um my my brother uh, the dad of the child said that can i believe that he was so shocked when his little girl was singing moped mop, that moped song that i sang in the car at home and i was like wow you know children how they pick things up and she 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 was in the car like she was not listening to us but that's not true children listen to everything well the next morning when i woke up as soon as i opened my eyes the holy spirit said to me henceforth when you're in the car only sing Sinatch songs to, to, and mentioned her name. The Holy Ghost told me that I should only sing Sinatch songs in the car, you know? <laughs> you know, and I was like, the Lord is taking this seriously. So God is very concerned about what we share around our children. Praise God. Yes. So spend time with them. I'm going, we're talking about children now. So spend time with them. Part one. And we're going to be, um, this series will end on Wednesday. Okay. So our scriptural reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11. We're just going to be reading three verses, verses 19 to 21. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 19 to 21. And you shall teach them, your children, speaking of them, when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, when thou risest up, and thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thine house and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon earth. Mm. Praise the Lord. So this is Moses, you know, um, Moses, the, the writer of the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, or the first five books of Moses, as it's called. It's called the Pentateuch. And here he was running off his ministry. And he was telling the children of Israel that they should lay up the words of God in their hearts and in their soul and bind them for a sign upon their hand that they may be as frontlets between their eyes. And he said to them that they should teach 
them teach the word of god the word of the word of the word of the law which is the word of god teach them to their children they should speak of the word they should speak of them when they sit down in thine house so what moses is saying as fathers and mothers are sitting in the house talk to your children about the word of god and when thou walkest by the way when thou liest down and when thou risest up so all you are supposed to be talking about is the word of god this is what the bible is saying this is what the bible is saying that when you sit down in the house talk to your children about the word of god you know tell them about how god divided the red sea with the blast blast of his nostril when you rise up talk about the word of god when you lie down talk about the word of god when they're going to bed give them the word of god let that be all they hear okay he says that your days he says and thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thine house and upon thy gates okay so in other words all those signs you know like we used to have um uh, just as the head of this family you know um you, you understand you put scriptures put scriptures in your house the the that's what he's saying here is the bible that's saying it he said that uh, and thou shalt write them upon the door of doorpost of thine house and upon thy gates okay you know, so we should put scriptures around our house. You know, when we are buying uh, maybe like paintings, let them be paintings of the word of God. This is what Moses is saying. When you put stickers, for God so loved the world, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, he says that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land wherein, where the, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon earth. There's a reason God knows what he's saying. God knows what he's saying, you know. So this is what he said, that we should teach our children, we should be speaking of the word of God. When we sit down, when we go out, when we come in, as we walk by the way, we should be telling them as you are in the car, driving them to school, be teaching them the word of God. Let that be all they know. Just like what God was telling me, that, you know, I shouldn't be singing worldly songs to, for that little girl to hear. I should sing spirit-inspired songs, specifically of Snatch. Then we used to listen to a lot of Snatch songs, you know, in the church where I was, uh, where, I, where I still am, you know, so... Um, that's what the Lord was saying, you know, and I, I just wanted to share that testimony. Spend time with them, part one. Now, the memory verse is taken from Proverbs chapter 17, verse 6. Proverbs chapter chapter 17, verse 6. And it says, children's children are the crown of old men and the glory of children are their fathers. Children's children are the crown of old men and <laughs> the glory of children are their fathers. <laughs> you know, grandparents love their children. The things, are, the things grandparents do with their children, you know, you'll be wondering, ah, can, is it the same man that brought, or the same woman that brought me up, you know? But the Bible says that children's children are the crown of their old age, and the glory of children are their fathers. Unfortunately, we have many absentee fathers, you know, um, who are refusing to take responsibility for their children. They just want to um, sire children, you know, and not have anything to do with their life the glory of children are their fathers and um i had a man of god this reverend chris Oyakilome, he said that when you see girls around sleeping around and doing things that they should not do you know into prostitution and things like that i'm paraphrasing what he said he said if you check they had daddy issues they had issues they had it was something that they lacked in their relationship with their father that has caused that and it's true it is very true i can testify to that you understand so when you see girls misbehaving there's something that they lack there's some fatherly affection some fatherly responsibility that that did not happen okay so if you trace it well you find it and it's true it should the glory of children are their fathers i i um many of you don't like this but um they did a survey, I think, in the United States, and they found that, that um, children who are brought up by single, this is in the U.S., children are brought up by single moms did less better than children that were brought up by single dads. I don't know why that was, but I just felt that I needed to share that. Um, and this is why if parents, you have to be very, very intentional you know it's very very intentional because whatever you do will affect your children divorce affects children i can tell you I, you know i can tell you because i grew up in um i, I grew up uh, with a single mom great mother great mother i did very well but that's not god's plan god's plan is for a mother and a father and children 
And that's why we, we as Christians, every child is our child. Praise God. Spend time with them because we live in a terrible world, you know. Um, a major danger in this generation is that parents are so busy with work that they neglect their children. It's absolutely wrong for domestic helps or nannies to spend more time with children than their parents. First Corinthians 15.33 says that evil communication corrupts good, good manners. Whomever children communicate with the most is whom they learn from the most. If you are a parent, you owe it to God to raise the children he has given you and not hand that responsibility over to someone else. You know, sometimes, uh, some in some cases, grandparents are the ones who bring up the children. But you see, that is saying that it is it's, it's bad for for parents to hand over their children to nannies and to, um, you know, to maids, you know, to house helps. They are the ones looking after the children because children tend to imitate who they spend the most time with. You know, and um, because the Bible says evil communication corrupts good morals, unfortunately or regrettably, um, um, the times are so hard now that even mother and father working together, they're not able to, um, you know, um, manage their f the finances of their family. And sometimes we have single mothers who are the only ones um, bringing up their children. So how are they not going to work? How are they not going to work? You understand? Um, and this is the reality. Sometimes some women are widowed, you know, early on in, in their lives and they are the ones bringing up the children. Um, or, you know, there's something has happened, a divorce has happened, or the man is just a runaway man, you know, a useless man. I'm sorry. God forgive me. Um, he just abandons the children, abandons the wife, you know, abandons his responsibility. And the woman is left to cater for the children on her own. So, you know, in such situations, it's very, very, it's very dicey because the woman has to work. You know, they won't eat. And poverty is a very terrible thing. And so sometimes the um, children have to be left at the daycare. Children have to be left with nannies or with housemaids. You know, and daddy is saying that um, evil communication corrupts good morals and that children tend to, it is whom they, the person they communicate with most is the person that they learn from the most you know so this is where the 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 problem lies that it says nowadays it's almost as if couples are competing with each other on who makes the most money so while men are out working women are also working leaving children without proper care fathers and mothers must both be available to raise the children that god has given to them psalm 127 verse 3 says that children are god's heritage in other words when you leave this world what god expects you to leave behind for him are uh, the children that he has brought under your care and this is not limited to your biological children wow parents are only caretakers and if they damage what has been placed under their care they'll pay dearly for it so children are heritage of the lord i really loved this when i was studying this that that it says that when we leave this world you know when parents leave what they leave behind for god is the children that they have brought up in the fear of god so those are the heritage of the, that's amazing. So our, our the rest, the, the the what God has to work with is the children, the godly children that we have brought up. Without that, God doesn't have anything to work with. And you know, um, that says parents are now competing. You know, but um, a, a, if 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 the two of you, husband and wife, agree and work together, that would, with the help of the Holy Spirit, you would do a good job. So that if daddy, so some fathers, you know, I used to have an uncle that he didn't like to push the buggy. You know, he was a traditional man, so he would leave his wife to push the buggy and he would walk in from because he was ashamed as an African man to push the buggy. That was in those days anyway, you know. So, but the thing is that children don't forget and the wife doesn't forget, you know. So, but if you walk together, if the husband is going to finish early from work, then he picks the, the babies from, from the daycare and spend time with them. You know, so that um, the children are not left in the hands of, uh, you know, people that because there's a lot of a lot of evil people around, a lot of witchcraft. The devil, you, you, you. I, 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 I see a few skits, you know, and um, you know, there was one skit I saw where the, this was in Africa, of course, and the the, the house girl was like twelve, and she they they took, brought her from the village somewhere, clothed her, fed her, put her in school, and yet she still 
attempted to poison her madam. And when they asked her, she was 15, why? She, she, she said nothing. She just wants to poison them. You want to kill? You say, are you hungry? No. Are you, do you have clothes to wear? Say yes. Are you this? Yes. But what's that? Witchcraft. And those, that's the person that was looking after their children. May God have mercy on us. There were times I want that is saying now that when there are times I wanted to play football with my peers as a little girl. But thank God my mother was always home to send me inside the house to study my books. I thought she was being mean, but she built in me the ability to ignore distractions and focus on my goals. The fear of my father's punishment also put me in check while growing up. My elder brother, brother was quite strong, but the day I saw him crying when my father disciplined him, I determined never to do anything that would make my father discipline me. In a, you know, I, in the more developed countries like UK, Canada, children always go for uh, sleepovers in their friend's house. And I read about how um, this, this, this girl was sleeping, she and her other friends were having a sleepover in their friend's house. And the father was one watching over them, you know, and everything. At night, the girl sent an urgent text around 3 a.m. to her mother. Please pick me up, pick me up, pick me up, pick me up. Because um, the, the girl's father had given them something to drink. And, you know, and eventually the father then came. The mother then came at 3 a.m. and said, you know, I, I want to pick up my daughter. And he was like, oh, why don't you come back in the morning? And he was like, are you crazy? My daughter. And she was drugged. She was so tired. She could barely walk you know and um in fact i think what she said was oh i don't feel comfortable drinking whatever he gave them and he said don't worry i'll make another one and he made another one for them and she drank and she was asking she then contacted the other parents to come and pick their children that early morning and he was saying to them oh why don't you um the children and the girls are sleeping why don't you come back tomorrow morning or like they want their children now understand so things like that and that is saying how you know when he was young he wanted to go and play football with the other children and his mom would say no he said i thought she was being mean but she built in me the ability to ignore distractions and focus on my goals and he said his daddy was very strict you know some some children develop bad habits right under their parents roof however the parents only get to find out several years later and at that time, it only takes the grace of God for them to change. If you are a parent, don't be too busy to train the children that God has given you. When you leave this world, the cars you drove and the houses you bought will not matter. What will matter are the children you left behind. There is an African adage that says that if you refuse to build your child because you are building your house, the child, that, the child you did not build, you sell the house you built. As a parent, the children God has given to you must be your priority, not your material possessions. So uh, as a parent, the children that God has given to us must be, uh, they must be our priority. Our priority are not our material possessions. So, and, and that is saying here that children develop bad habits right under their parents' roof. Even as teenagers. In fact, the work of a mother never ends, you know. It never ends. You, you, you are a parent forever. And it, 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 it says, um, however, the parents only get to find out several years later. And at that time, it takes only the grace of God for them to change. For example, if there's a father that smokes in the house, the children are going to smoke. You may think you disposed of the cigarette butts well. Oh, no. You know? And when they're going to do... When they're, if they're, you're smoking and the children are watching you smoke weed, you know, in the house, they're going to do... They're going to smoke... You can't escape it. They're going to do that. Pro max. They would... You, ten times what you did. You understand? So... The, that that is saying that you know children they will do certain things under your noses as a parent you would not know and that's why we need the holy spirit to expose every hidden thing praise god to expose every hidden thing that our children are doing you know that is going to talk about talk to us later in a few next few days about how we should be interviewing our children speak to them talk to them be their gist partner ask them questions what happened at school today so that they can talk back to you and you hear what they are saying okay hear what they are saying as a parent, he says, he says that um, there's an African adage that says that if you refuse to build your child because you are building a house, the child did not build, you sell the house you built. May God help us in Jesus' name. Because children will develop bad habits right under our noses. And, you know, um, I hope my mother doesn't hear this, but, you know, when we were young, because um, I was the youngest in my family, um, and I'd grown a bit, so my mother would go to work, you know, she was a banker, 
and I'd go and stay with my cousins. My, my uncle had three children, and um, he was not was a non-believer. I mean, you know, we're not. Really, I was not really. We're not really practicing Christians at that time. So I'd go and stay with my cousins all day, and in the night, my mother would pick me up. And my uncle used to have a lot of extracted, um, you know, videos, sex videos under his bed. He and his wife. And um, while my uncle was gone, we, that's what we're feeding on. We're watching those extra those blue films. That's what we watched growing up, you know. So you can imagine the kind, and that's what we did. <laughs> Praise God. And and children do that a lot, you know. So if you if you're a father and you have Playboy magazines and sexual magazines hidden in your room in your house, your children will find it's just a matter of time. Reflection: How much time do you spend with your children every day? How much time do you spend with your children every day? Is a question. Christ is made unto us wisdom. God will give you wisdom. If you stay at his feet and ask him, he will guide you. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you because you are our Father who art in heaven. You are the only wise God. You are immortal and you are invisible. I pray that you give every parent wisdom to manage their children in the mighty name of Jesus and to bring up their children in the fear of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, I pray, Almighty God, that you help us. That everything that is hidden, Almighty God, in the lives of our children, in their schools, Almighty God, let them be exposed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I ask that you raise even help us to assist parents, Almighty God, in the bringing up of their children in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that we raise their schools, Almighty God, that the fear of God will dwell in the teachers and in the school in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Almighty God. Ask for grace, Almighty, that you give great parents grace to spend more time with their children and to prioritize their children for your glory and for your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. I hope this blessed you. Remember, this is a three-day series, so make sure you stick around. And I give you permission to share this video on your social media platform. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. My name again is Sister Tell Have a beautiful day. You are the king of the